All right. Well, I'm going to do something different for a change. <laughs> I'm going to preach a regular like sermon. Wow. Now, when I say regular like sermon, I'm going to take a Bible passage and I'm going to try and apply it into our lives. And it's probably going to take a little while. So instead of being a short 10, 15 minute, maybe 20 minute sermonette, this one might take 20 or 30 minutes. But let's see how it goes. The title I've given this one is called Applied Faith. Applied Faith. And it comes out of Daniel chapter 3. Now you know the story. It's about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the sermon's about faith, and it's my intent to challenge you. The question is, how much faith do you have? Now, faith is a word that preachers like to throw out all the time. But I'm not talking about faith as in I believe in God. The devil believes in God. I'm talking about I believe in God. That's a little different than I believe in God. <laughs> now, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was the most powerful man in the world in his day. His ego was enormous. His advisors loved to cater to that ego. You know, that's the problem with being a rich or powerful man. You never know if anyone likes you for you or if they just like you for your money and your power. One time his, his advisors encouraged him to build a giant gold statue that was 90 feet tall. They held a giant celebration and everyone, there was anyone who was there, all the best people, dignitaries of all types, politicians. They had state traps and prefects and governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, celebrities of all kinds. In most of those words, you'll find right in your Bible. All those words. To flatter the king, they made a rule that everyone must bow down and worship the statue, and the king signed that. He liked that idea. Failure to do so would be punished by being burned alive in a fiery furnace. Now, you, so far, you've heard this story before. But I want you to stick with me as we talk about faith in action. Applied faith. You see, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't just refuse to bow down and worship that statue. Have you ever listened carefully to what they had to say? In the Bible, it says the king was furious and had them brought before him. He wanted to give them a second chance. And they told him, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. Wow, that's faith. Preachers like to talk about that. But then they said, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, even if God does not save them. Christians, are you afraid to speak out for God out of fear that he doesn't back you up? I've been there. I prayed for people on their deathbed that were healed. I prayed for people on their deathbed who were not healed. But I will continue to pray for people. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, But, Almighty King, even if our God does not save us, we want you to know that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Now, people, that's applying your faith. Even if he does not rescue us. Have you ever wondered which one of the three said that? 
And which took more courage to speak up and say, we're going to do it, or to be one of the two standing there that says, that's right. Amen, brother. Preach it. Tell that king. <laughs> king Nebuchadnezzar was furious because they defied him to his very face. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than normal. They were tied up, fully clothed, and thrown into a furnace so hot that the soldiers that threw them in were killed. Now that's hot. They didn't even go in the furnace and they died just from being near it. At this point, the Bible records that King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we had tied up and thrown into the fire? They replied, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Now, we got to assume that was Jesus. And even through the fire, the king recognized there's something different about him. It just sends shivers down my spine thinking about what was going on there. Have you been bored by this story? Or have you tried to place yourself there? Imagine what it must have been like. To be standing next to King Nebuchadnezzar as one of his trusted advisors. And, and he says, didn't we throw three in? Why, yes, O oh king. Then why do I see four and one looks like the son of the gods? Uh, well, um, the, um, yeah, um, well, um. <laughs> what do you say to your king now? How shocked must they have all been? Our God is so great and so mighty. People, this isn't an old fairy tale. This is out of the Bible. And the Bible has, has proven itself over and over to be right and truthful. There are plenty of proofs that the Bible is to be believed. I believe it. Now, don't just look at it from the perspective of the king and his advisors. Look at it from the perspective of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> All right? They're being thrown into the fiery furnace. The soldiers are dying. What would you do? Just walk out? I mean, they, it must have taken them time to figure out how to shut the door from a distance without killing themselves. But they just walked around in that furnace. And, and God came down and talked to them. Don't you wonder what they were talking about? Can't you just hear God show up and say, wow, it's a beautiful day out today, isn't it? You like the weather I gave you? You know, I could have given you a stormy, wet, rainy day, but I chose to give you this bright, sunny day so that everyone could see that my hand was at work. And I could three men saying, <laughs> um, yeah, um, okay, thank you, um, Wow, you know, we really believe in you and trust in you. I mean, what do you say? <laughs> what do you say to God Almighty? King Nebuchadnezzar got so excited, he stands up 
and he gets closer and he yells out, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come here. That must indicate that they could have walked out anytime they wanted. Do you know what I'm saying? He didn't tell anyone to go open the door. He just told them, come here. They were there of their own free will. Regardless of what the king and his advisors thought, they were there of their own free will. When he called them out, he said, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, come here, servants of the Most High God. Think King Nebuchadnezzar's had a change of heart, people. Looks to me like he learned a lesson. Now, there's a couple of miracles in there that I don't think we hear about too often. For instance, they stayed in there of their own free will. They came out of their own free will. King didn't send a bunch of soldiers to help him out. That seemed kind of pointless. But I think the most amazing thing is yet to be read here. Daniel writes this. When they came out, all the dignitaries and politicians and celebrities gathered around them. And the Bible says, they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Wow. Not even a singed hair. We're not talking maybe sort of, kind of, okay. We're talking about perfectly fine. Their clothes were perfectly fine. And did you hear the end of that? They didn't even smell of smoke. Ever been around a campfire? How about a fireplace or a wood-burning stove in your house? You get the smell of smoke, right? And Daniel says, they all crowded around them. Don't tell me they were, they were upwind from, from these three. It says they crowded around them. Around means around. You know what I'm saying? There was no upwind. Lots of witnesses. King Nebuchadnezzar says this. Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other God can save this way. That's what King Nebuchadnezzar had to say. Now would you love to have the kind of faith that these three men had? Faith that would allow you to walk around in a furnace seven times hotter than normal. Let me give you a secret. You got to practice your faith. Trust in God and consciously practice putting your faith into action on a daily basis. That's applied faith.